why isn't every Democrat politician speaking out against a transgender day of a vengeance or whatever, which is they're just, the real world they want to use is violence, a transgender day of violence. Why isn't the media, I guess we know why the media is in league with them, but every Democratic politician should be forced to condemn this. Again, Trump has to condemn everything 20 times and it's still not enough. Uh, would you condemn the Proud Boys, condemn the Nazis, condemn Adolf Hitler, condemn, you know, but, but they can have a transgender day of a vengeance and no one has to condemn it. That, that, that seems crazy to me. So to understand why Democrats don't have to go and denounce this, you've got to really work backwards and understand that, and I know you get this, but for people in the audience who don't, we're, we need to begin at institutional capture because we got to this place because all of our popular institutions, whether it be you know things like the FBI, Hollywood, the news, academia, they've all been captured by extreme radicals, not just blue dog Democrats, not just people who want a different tax rate, but by extreme radicals who want to usher in Marxism. OK, these are people who are authoritarian in nature and they want to force far left policy. Once those were captured and they took those over, they then started to you know, transfer this ideology to the next generation of kids to be essentially their child soldiers in pursuit of changing America's fabric. And that's what we're seeing play out. It's why things are ratcheting up. It's why things feel violent and you know, really unsteady. Even myself, I have to hire security for my kids and my wife when we go to public things because we've had too many crazy people. We've had blood soaked mail sent to us. We've had a crazy guy show up and bang on our house doors. This stuff is reaching a, a really dangerous place. And I said this to my wife last night and I really hope I'm wrong. I really don't think things are going to change until somebody who is a prominent person is murdered by one of these radicals. And I think that that may wake some Democrats up to the fact that this is going to end up at their door as well if they don't start denouncing this and they don't stop this. And I really do think that the, the institutional capture by these people on the far left have put Democrat politicians who even disagree with this, the ones who are like, oh, this seems crazy, but won't say it. It's because they understand the paradigm of their entire party is now controlled by these radicals. And if they step out of line, they are going to be crushed. Look at how all of the media and popular institutions now treat somebody like Tulsi Gabbard for coming out and, you know, standing against these things. They will eat you alive if you step out of line. And so that fear is the reason they haven't. But I think when someone's silent because of fear, the only thing that's going to make them talk is an equal or greater amount of fear forcing them to talk. And so I think that when something bad happens to a prominent person on the right and they get the realization that, oh, you know what, this could actually happen in reverse if this continues, maybe that will start to change some of these people's minds. But unfortunately, I don't think this is going to stop or even slow down until something terrible like that happens. And I hope I'm wrong, I really do, but that feels like what we're headed toward. Robbie, thanks for granting us some more time and circling back to us. Really appreciate it. Owe you a big favor. Uh, thank you so much. Y you know, his, his final point, I'm, I'm thinking, didn't Steve Scalise get shot or wasn't it, who Dur got, are you talking about during the congressional baseball, baseball game? game? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, and, but didn't die. That, but that, that's to his point. It's going to take a, an absolute murder by the left before these things who's start to change. Who's the woman out in Arizona that got shot in the face? Uh, uh, she was she was a Democrat uh, politician. She was the one that was married yeah. to the astronaut. Yeah. Um, but let's not overlook the fact. It, it isn't uh, isn't Gabbard in town today? Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's yeah. in Nashville today. So let's not overlook the fact that this happened on the day that she happened to be in town in reaction to the Covenant School shooting. Yeah. She's been here, I think, for a couple of days. Tried to get her on the show today, mm. and uh, but you know her schedule is is filled up or was filled up. I, I, 
that to me speaks to to the collaboration and this being a, a planned event. The fact that she's in town, and you mentioned it in the, in the first segment today with Robbie, Nashville being ground zero, and what he was describing about the left taking over the institutions. It was called the slow march through the institutions and the the '60s movement, the hippie movement back in the day when they weren't successful. They had the ingenious plan of. This is going to take more time than we thought to get to the end result. We need to take over these institutions. We need to be in the schools. We need to be the ones teaching the next generations. So this has been uh, uh, proliferating for 60 years now. Uh, now, so, And this is when you have places like Tennessee, places like Nashville, who are resisting the way other places in the country aren't, they see that that slow march through the institution, decades of indoctrinating the children and trying to infiltrate the next generation isn't working. So what is next for them? Apparently the answer to that is violence. Yeah, that, that is certainly the next step. I, I, only thing I would slap, their plan is working in, in terms of like, you know, we got school teachers hanging up pride flags everywhere. We, we, as a believer, we've turned pride into some kind of virtue, mm -hmm. which just blows my mind. Everybody's running around talking about pride, pride, pride. And, and I was, maybe it was Delano I was talking to this morning or last night, where somebody just made the point to me is, I can't remember, it doesn't matter who it was, but it's just like, anytime you have a flag, that means you're there for war and total capture. In, in terms of, you, you know, America has a flag. Yeah. The state of Tennessee has a flag. The, the alphabet, they have a flag. They're there for war. You know, they're there. This is like Game of Thrones, and they house, uh, I don't know if I used to be able to say all the houses, House Stark or whatever. Yeah. The Alphabet Mafia has the house alphabet and a flag, and they're planting it in schools and every place else. They're making the, the White House getting lit up in rainbow colors. I think everyone has a banner that they're willing to fight under. So when you see those things hang, hanging in a classroom, that is who they are. That, that is the one thing that dominates their life. Uh, as patriotic as I am, there's not an American flag on my house, but if you walk in, you're gonna see a Bible on the table because that's who I'm willing to fight well, for. That's Dave, who I'm willing to die Dave, for. Dave, uh, look on the top of your head right now. Uh, there is a oh, flag. Yeah. There is, there is. <laughs> this may be, well, I can't say this is the, not the only one. It's also Sasquatch up there, too. So, I mean, let, let's be real about it. But I, I agree. There's, I have, you know, three Bibles at home and, and no flag, but I do have hats with flags on it and I got other things. And, and, and again, part of the other, the, and I'm off on just a tangent, but I was debating about what to call this show years ago. And, and it was either gonna be Fearless or it was gonna be One Nation. Or, yeah, because that's what, we gotta get back to One Nation Under God. And, and you know, I, had a, I got this symbol and all this other stuff that I, I was into. It's, it's, it's cause because of my sports connection, it would be a finger with a f athlete or fan holding up the number one sign. And then there would be a wristband that said nation, one nation. It's a combination of sports and, you know, Amer patriotism, and we got to get back to that. And so when a person made the point to me about the flag, I was like, yeah, the, the, the flag does exactly what you said. This is what I'm willing to die for. And, and America is, or, or I don't know if it is or was, but, but, it's something I was willing to die for. Mm -hmm. But they so changed America that, that I made the point, uh, there was there's a UFC fighter from Arkansas that's pretty popular and pretty patriotic, but he was talking about he's willing to defend Arkansas. Mm -hmm. He did not say America, he said Arkansas. And this was probably a year ago. And, and I was sitting there going, oh, that, that's, a good, that's a great pivot point because people have, He's basically expressing, I don't know what America is. I know what Arkansas is. 
And that's how I kind of feel. I know what Tennessee is. I know what California is. I I'm not dying for yeah. California. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so that kind of breaks up the whole America thing. And it just, I just, oh, man. And events like this are only going to further perpetuate that as well. Because, again, you, you labeling Nashville as ground zero earlier this week doing that. Yeah. It, it's playing out in front of us. And if they don't get the desired result from what happened today, what's the next step for them? Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.